Welcome back to that handicapping show. I'm Claire Novak, joined once again by Tom Lamara. We are here at Pimlico Racecourse to talk about the Preakness Stakes, where Kentucky Derby winner American Farrell will attempt to head down the road to the Triple Crown. But the top three from the Derby are back in here again, and some new shooters and a couple of other horses coming out of the Derby. Only an eight-horse field, but looks like an interesting race. Yes, and really the top three, according to all reports that we've gotten, they're training extremely well. They look good, as you noted um, this morning. And uh, it's, it's really hard to get past those top three in light of the races that all three of them ran in the Kentucky Derby. So I don't see a lot of value in this race from a, a wagering standpoint. Um, personally, I may be looking more at horizontal bets like the pick threes, et cetera, et cetera, because, um, uh, you know, in the Derby, we got a really good exact and trifecta price. Mm -hmm. Not so sure that that's going to be the case again this time. So firing line was second in the Derby. Dortmund was third for those of you who have been living under a rock somewhere. And as Tom said, all three of them look great going over the track this morning. Firing line just jogged with the pony, but Dortmund and American Pharaoh both galloped. And I was initially going to stick with my Derby pick, which was Dortmund. Mm -hmm. But having seen American Pharaoh and just the way he gets over the track here, I really do think that he's coming into this race in excellent form. It goes really against what I want to do because I'm a huge fan of Dortmund. I love the horse. I would be thrilled if he won. But American Pharaoh just looked amazing training this morning, and I think he's going to have to be my top pick. All right. Well, I'm sticking with Dortmund. Um, Loyalty. I picked, well, I picked him in the Derby, and I thought he ran a really nice race. Yes, he finished third. He was passed by um, those two horses, American Pharaoh and Firing Line. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think this race, uh, I'm not so sure that he'll be on the lead in this race. And we've seen him rate and come from off the pace. And, uh, you know, he's cutting back a 16th of a mile. I think this is a better setup. Kind of intrigued by the post positions. Mm -hmm. The one is American Pharaoh, the two is Dortmund, the three is Mr. Z, which ah. you can talk about in a second. Firing line got the eight hole, which is the outside post, and mm -hmm. I think that's a really good spot for that horse. Yeah. So um, this is going to be a very interesting race to watch. Um, you know, look, the winner of the Derby, he won the Derby. No reason that he can't win this race. So if you're picking him, it's completely understandable. Um, if you're betting the race and you really like American Farrow, you're going to have to take maybe three to five or four to five. Right, and as far as Firing Line and Dortmund go, both of those horses have proven to be so talented, and I really do agree with you that from the eight hole, Firing Line is dangerous, and Gary Stevens is pretty pleased with where he drew compared mm -hmm. to where American Pharaoh and Dortmund drew. Mr. Z is a little bit of the X factor, as Bob Baffert called him this morning, which I think is a kind word for nutcase. We're not really sure what he's going to do. Um, D. Wayne Lucas did say that he has gotten through a lot of his issues, the lugging out, the bearing in, all these kinds of things. He thinks that he's going to run uh, a fairly just a game type of race in here for the Preakness and he really wanted to run him but it's very very interesting his location next to those two horses in the gate. Yes and he's not a horse that needs the lead but he generally runs close to the pace mm -hmm. and so you're going to have two horses inside of him who I'm sure will want good position and at least one horse to his outside who's going to want position. So what you know this could be very interesting this horse could could greatly affect the race depending on where he's placed early. Now real quick before we go, uh, new shooters in the race, Dividing Rod, you've got, uh, pronounce the horse's name. Bodhisattva. He knows how to say it. Bodhisattva. <laughs> uh, new shooters traditionally actually have not fared that well in the Preakness. Any thoughts on Dividing Rod? The, then... one, the one that I would use, say, in tries and supers it would have to be Divining Rod because he looks like a horse who's moved up his game. Uh, you know, he won the Coolmore Lexington. It, it wasn't a great field, but he, he won the race nicely. Um, he's been training at Fairhill, which I think is a great place for horses to train. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think he might be the horse to use at, you know, maybe, who knows, maybe he'll be nine or 10 to one. Yeah. All right, well, Tom sticking with his derby choice. I am. Myself uh, going to the Kentucky Derby winner, picking the chalk. So all of those of you who can criticize me for picking the chalk, there you go. Happy to make your day. But I do really think uh, from a an interest standpoint, I would be thrilled to see Firing Line. I would be even more thrilled to see Dortmund uh, run a winning race 
here on Saturday. Yeah, and one other thing too, you know, the Kentucky Derby um, really was a three horse race from start to finish, mm -hmm. except for Frosted who almost uh, nailed third over Dortmund. But anyway, I think this race will be a lot more active than the Derby, yeah. even though it's eight horses versus 18. So. All right, so he's going to throw in the Federico Tessio winner into some of his exotics, and I would say don't leave out Mr. Z because even though he hasn't won for a while. The Lexington winner. Yeah, oh, the Lexington winner. That's, That's the Bodhisattva. One oh, yeah, him. <laughs> that Bodhisattva is the Federico Tessio winner. Dividing Rod is the one that, that Tom is going to throw into his horizontals, and I would say don't leave out Mr. Z just because he does tend to uh, hit the board and run well. And because she loves the horse. He's a great character. <laughs> He's like, oh my god, I'm at the Preakness, I'm going to run in this race, what? I like him, he has a cute nose. All right, we All always right. want to thank Equibase for providing our PPs, even though we didn't use them this morning because everything we know is in our heads. And thank you for watching that handicapping show.